All right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, Fight Fast Football. Today we're going to take a look at overhangs and safeties in your defense, depending on um, what kind of defensive structure you are playing, and we're going to look at the adjustments you need to make. We're going to look at a little bit of two-by-two, two, Y off, and then maybe some, uh, maybe some 21 personnel uh, with the potential of a Y off or situations where he can move and trade and why it's important to understand uh, what your safeties and overhangs are doing. Make sure you check out some of our partners, Game Strat, Sideline Replay System. I've used at the last couple schools I've been at. Absolutely love the product. Uh, easy to work with, great customer service. Baker Sporting Goods, uh, they provide our uniforms, our spirit packs for our kids. Uh, they provide coaching gear. They provide fan gear so you can get everything in one convenient spot. Dome Headwear, hat company that I use with Play Fast Football and probably the last 10 years the schools I've been at have, have been, uh, we've used Dome hats. So if you're looking for something completely customizable, you can design your own hat. Make sure you check out Dome. Different USA, the ultimate striking machine. We've had in the last three to four years at the schools I've been at, we've had them in our weight room. You can work in the off season on the techniques, fundamentals, skill development with striking, elbows in, thumbs up, thousands of reps don't need a partner. So make sure you check out the Different USA. Just Play Football, which is the playbook software we use here at the school I'm currently at and at the last school I was at. It's a, it's a software I use if I'm gonna do webinars or speak at clinics or anything I need to draw. It's always gonna be the software that I use. I think it's the best play drawing tool on the market. It also has some Unique little features like quizzes where you can quiz your players on game plans and playbooks. So check them out. High and tight ball security training aid, instant auditory feedback. Players have to hold the ball in the proper position with the proper points of pressure. If they do that, they hear a beep. As long as they are uh, doing a drill and they can he still hear the beep, they know they got the ball secured. As soon as they get the wrist down, the elbow out, or anything that is not proper uh, ball security, they, they'll lose the auditory uh, feedback of the beep. So when they don't hear the beep, they know that something's wrong. So they got to get the ball back to where it belongs. So make sure you check them out. And then TD Publishing, a uh, company trying to help educate coaches, uh, grow coaches, get their knowledge uh, to improve or further on from where they're at with books and videos. They've, their most recent one was a uh, six part series with Ferris State, the Division II national champions, and some of the things they do on offense. So make sure you check out TD Publishing. So depending on what type of system you play, and today we're going to look at it from a, a broken stack three high structure. Uh, your overhangs and your safeties and, and versus different formations and things into the boundary and, and uh, whether you're a field defense or not, that's always going to dictate some of the things that you can do within your defensive structure and some of the changes that you have to be ready for when you talk about shifts and trades and motions and other things. So, you know, two by two with a tight end attached has always been one of those formations that can create some issues for you. When we were a 4 2 5 team, where we put the nickel had a lot to do with the things that we could do in coverage, all right? Or, or you know, how we played that nickel would, would have a lot to do with what we could do in coverage because he was almost the extra defender. He was the guy we were sending to what we thought was the passing strength. So, you know, if we had to set the nickel to the tight end and we could still play palms to the other side, but if that tight end was an off player that could move and now we've got our nickel into the boundary, if he were to move motion or shift or trade to the other side, could we play the new formation with him over there? Now, anybody that's watched any of the videos uh, that, that I've done in, in the last eight or nine years talking about 4-2-5 stuff, even 3-3 stuff, and now some of the broken stack three high, we cross train safeties to play on the strong side and the away side of coverages just for that reason. So that if we were to set the nickel into the boundary, and play quarters to the tight end and palms to the field, and they put us in a situation where the tight end traded and he got us into trips to the field, we wouldn't have to make a standard weak side check to trips to the field. Because both safeties are hybrid guys, I could just take a, a, a safety to the trip side that was playing palms, could then make a mix or a poach or whatever call we wanted to, to use, and he had the ability to play all those coverages. So if he had to play mix, on number two and the free safety moved over with three now we're in a situation where they can play the trip side and back to the single side my left safety can spin down and play sky or whatever he needs to play because i have hybrid safety types if you are playing with a true weak side safety and a true nickel if you set the nickel into the boundary and they give you strength or a trade over to the field now you're going to have a weak side safety that's two a trips formation, or he's to a formation side that is the strength and you only teach him to be on the weak side of coverages, you're going to be very limited in how you can handle those things. If you put the Sam to the field 
and and or you're nickel to the field and you play a field defensive structure or you declare these twins as the passing strength and you set the Sam there. If they were in motion or bring a guy back to make trips into the boundary, now you're going to be stuck with how you have to play those theories because into the boundary, you are short a player because you set your nickel to the field. So now when you get the motion into the boundary, if you don't have hybrid safeties that are used to playing three receiver sets or if you don't travel your free safety with them into the boundary, now you're going to be stuck playing things a certain way. It's the same issue we have with, with the 3-2 broken stack. The Sam essentially for us in the 3-2 broken stack becomes that kind of nickel guy that's going to go to the passing strength. And we're going to leave our theory of left and right safeties. And we're now going to play with the middle safety off the number three receiver. But this two by two formation still gives us some of the same issues because technically, if you were playing tight front three high defense, you'd be in a lighter box theory and two by two formations would get you into a three one box. Now that's fine when it's 10 personnel and two by two removed. If it's two by two with a Y attached, it's awfully tough to sit there and say that you're going to play a three one box with a Y attached and hope that you can get the necessary safety support, all right, to gain the numbers that you need to gain very quickly, all right? But if you look at it from the standpoint of where the nickel or the overhang goes, if I set the SAM to the passing strength, to the boundary side, if I don't remove any linebackers, if I leave my linebackers in the box because with a Y attached, I want to play a 3-2 box, not a 3-1 box, I'm now stuck with very limited coverage options on that side. Now it's into the boundary. All right. So I definitely agree with that. So there are some things we could do into the boundary. We could play, all right, some cover two rules into the boundary. We could play a locked version into the boundary where the safety is now playing man off the tight end. The problem with the, with the locked version in the tight front is you're going to need a real aggressive safety and an active will, because now you've got, they've got leverage on the four eye. They've got leverage on the will. And now that safety, if he's a lock player, if the, if the tight end decides to block, we're going to need that safety to fit. We're good versus almost every run except for possible quarterback lead runs, but we'll also gain the middle safety if we got those runs. So we've got to make a determination going into the spring. If they are a two-by-two two team with a Y attached, what do we want to do with the Sam linebacker? Okay, so again, if we put the Sam linebacker to the passing strength, because he's technically our overhang in that defense. Of the three backers, he's the guy that's going to be the overhang. He's going to travel to the passing strength. If we put him to the passing strength here and we decide to play our normal palms rules to the passing strength, on the back side, if the will stays in the box, we are going to be forced to play some version of cover two, some version of lock, all right, or possibly we might be able to stay with a palms theory because this split of these two is – Tight enough, we could play a palm theory, but can we support the run in a palm theory from this deep, all right? Or from probably deeper, if he was locked, he'll be at about six. If it's palms, he'll be at about 10. Can we support the run in a palm structure into the boundary? So we usually choose to go with some type of lock scenario, all right? This way now, what we've got to deal with is we're going to have to deal with runs into the boundary, and we're going to have to be able to handle those, especially if they start pulling guys into the boundary. All right, because in one back, if we're locked, we feel like if, if they run the ball, all right, weak side here, if they run the ball weak side here, depending on, on what they're running and how they're running it. So if they ran some type of zone theory into the weak side here, okay, we feel good that we should be able to equate the numbers into the boundary if the tight end has to be a blocker. All right, we feel like with this front, we're going to get the ball shoved a little bit wider. OK, traditionally for us, the way we would fit it, if this back was away, this backer would be thinking about playing the front side A if he didn't get any pullers. This backer would be thinking about falling to the backside C so that this backer can hang, the overhang can hang for RPOs. Now we got to figure out where do we want to fit the middle safety. So the middle safety is playing off of three. If three went away, we would be slow in the backside A and we would be ready to fit where needed or possibly be a bonus player on the quarterback, okay? So into the boundary, when we set like that, we're okay with runs. If we start getting pullers, now what we're gonna have to do, so if we started getting like maybe a bad scheme into the boundary where they put the back here and they wanna run the back sweeps to the field, but maybe they're running some type of GT back, 
Well, now that they're bringing pullers, if they've got a body on the four eye and a body on the wheel, here's one guy that we're going to gain because the tight end blocked and we're in lock. We've got to be able to gain, and hopefully we can gain if they have to, if they're reading the end, what's going to happen is they're probably going to be able to double the nose. So we've got to hope that we can get the mic over the top, or we've got to be able to get the middle safety to equate numbers. But if it's a read theory versus the tight front, we should be able to get the ball handed to the bash. And now with the ball handed to the bash theory, okay, again, if this was this formation, the middle safety would be lined up over here. Now with the bash theory, we've got to hope that we can get it supported. All right, with, if, if the four eye, if they don't block the four eye back and we chase, they're going to give the bash, depending on how they block this, we've got to get it supported with our nickel and our right safety out there. Our middle safety would probably be later to it there. All right, so if we chose to play it that way, if we chose to play it where it's, you know, field side rules, passing strength rules, we're sending the overhang to the passing strength. Well, now we're kind of limited into the other side of the formation. We're a little bit limited with what coverages we could play unless we were real willing to walk the will out because the other, in why off, the thing I'm always worried about is he can motion and trade and create other formations. So how do I want to set my guys to be able to handle the multitude of formations we might see? You know, the other the other scenario for us would be, can we set the Sam, can we set the Sam to the, the tight end so that we can play quarters and gain an extra hat? So if the Y is off there, depending on where the ball is and what we want to do, can we set the overhang to the tight end? So can we set the overhang to the tight end side? which now means we'd be in a 3-1 box theory because the will's going to have to bump to play palms. And the only way the will wouldn't bump is if we lock that side. And the problem with locking that side for me is if the ball's in the middle of the field and those are the twins out there, I don't know if I want to live in a 3-2 box lock coverage outside and be a little bit short on perimeter runs and then have to make tackles in the, in the quick passing game out there. So if we stayed in our base palms rules, what's going to end up happening is we can play quarters to this side now because the Sam, the apex, the extra defender is on that side. So he can be the D-gap force flat play. Safety can play off a two, middle safety can still play off a three. We're palms to that side. So that version of the three, one box isn't terrible. With the four eye to the wheel, we think the ball is gonna get sent back out to him. Okay, so we think the ball is gonna get sent back out to him there. So that version isn't the end of the world. And, and we're probably gonna, mess around a little bit with two by two, 11 personnel, why on, seeing if we could play it, all right, out of this lighter box. If we didn't want to play it with a light box and the will has to come back in the box, well, now we get really limited. If we wanted to play it with a three, two box, now we're going to get really limited outside with what we can do because we're missing the overhead. Okay, so we either have to roll the safety down and get into some version of a maybe three deep type coverage. All right, where we spin a safety down and, and get ourselves into some type of three deep scenario. By rule with the three high safety stuff, we can't, if we were split field, we would just roll him down and we would just play the middle safety or the free safety there. And if you were split field, then you'd have your same seven man, all right, seven man front, five man box, seven man front scenarios. You're in bombs, you're in quarters, everything is good. And that's one of the reasons we have toyed around with going to a tight three, four structure and not the three high broken stack structure because a tight three, four structure gives you the added benefit of having overhang and safety to each side. So anytime you have an overhang and a safety to each side of the ball, you should be able to handle just about every formation you're given, all right, with less movement. Now your trips coverage is depending on the personnel, if you're true three, four, now your three by one stuff gets a little bit limited in coverage because your backers that are outside backers probably aren't going to be two vertical players. So now you're going to have to play some things where you may need to either borrow the backside safety to the front side, or you've got to play an abbreviated version of a coverage that allows you to midpoint, <coughs> excuse me, midpoint some routes. If you get four berths, midpoint some routes so you can leave your other safety to the backside. But the greatest thing about the three, four, again, with overhangs on both sides, if they gave me some type of 
three by one with the Y attached here, even though I might have to borrow the backside safety, even though I have to borrow the backside safety to, the, to possibly play three vertical with a middle of the field open coverage concept, I still have the Sam linebacker as a body presence underneath number one. So he still has some D gap force presence and he still has some curl flat buzz under one presence where in that slant window, possibly that hitch window, that access throw, he's still a body out there. Okay, so now if I have to borrow a safety, I still have some body presence under number one week. I don't have to just straight worry about number one locked by himself with no help. All right, the corner having to, to lock him by himself. I have some body presence underneath. So when you get an overhang on both sides, to me, that is one of the, you know, probably safest ways that you can get into your three on two, four on three type of coverage deals because the overhangs and the safeties provide in a two by two Y attached world, they provide the ability to play whatever you want while maintaining a three, two box and never having to bump. So the, the broken stack light box theory the broken stack light box theory. So let's say this is to the field. And let's say it's Y off to the field. Passing strength is into the boundary. So if we travel our, if we leave the SAM to the field, now we're going to play our quarters concepts to the field. So the SAM's to the field. Right safety plays quarters. Middle safety still plays off three. And now to this side with no overhang, okay, now into the boundary with the B gap taken, it's okay now to go ahead and apex the wheel a little bit. You're into the boundary. He doesn't have far to go, but the issue is in the run game, can you recreate if the back is away, is he going to be able to play that front side A? And now with a number two out here, if the ball gets to the perimeter, if the wheels walked out, you're probably going to want the wheel in that gap, you're gonna want the anchor in that gap. And now the nose and the mic are gonna to have to cancel the two gaps. And you're definitely gonna to have to fall the middle safety back on the cue. So there are some things there where it gets a little bit funky with your run fits, how you're trying to do it. If you went to a three one box, and this would essentially become that three one box theory. Now the A gaps are gonna be taken by the nose and the mic. You're not going to count the will or any other backer in the A-gap fit. So now, if the nose and the mic have to fit, so if this was zone to the boundary, so if this was zone working this way, your nose will fall for us in a lag technique. Your nose will fall backside, which means your mic would play that A-gap right there. Well, in a 3-1 light box theory, if the mic is an A-gap player, he's not going to fall back to any C-gap. So now you're going to need possibly your middle safety as a fallback player if three goes away. So if that was three and three went inside and away with no pullers, I might need my middle safety on the backside for the cue so that I can hold my D-gap flat player a little bit longer. Even though he doesn't have a two removed, the RPO window isn't as big, but there still are some issues over here. If he's the guy that they might be reading in the RPO game. So now what you got to figure out is, are you okay if you put... If, if it's if it's wide to the field, attached to the field, you're okay to the boundary. This 3-1 box to me is a little bit more doable into the boundary. The ball doesn't have, you know, there's not as much room for the ball to go over there. The wheel doesn't have to walk as far to play palms. He's already sitting out there. But if you get back into the 3-1 light box world, the nose and the mic are canceling the A-gaps. That's what they do in a two-by-two two theory. Okay? If you... Again, now, if you went with passing strength rules, what you now got to understand is if your Sam goes to the passing strength and he goes to the twins, now what you're going to end up happening, what's going to end up happening is you're now going to have your mic and you got to determine what you want to do with your will. For us, our will doesn't play quarters. So I can't even think about going to a 3-1 box Will outside, unless I cross train the will to play quarters, and that's an idea that we are thinking about. Because if I did that, then I could possibly play quarters there, cross train the will to be a quarters guy, 
And then if we're to a three, one white box theory, the A gaps are being canceled by these two. All right, and we're right in the world that we've been living in. If it's 10 personnel, we don't even have a thought about it. That's how we play it. Not that big of a deal. Y gets attached. Now we got to start thinking, is that box good enough against a Y attached or do we want to start? Because now the Y can insert. He can start doing a lot of different things. He, you know, he, he can pull, he can insert. He's not out wide and he's also not on the line of scrimmage. A Y that's on the line of scrimmage to me doesn't pose as many problems, even though it's probably better for the offense as a three-man surface. He really can't shift motion. He could trade, but if he trades, he's going to reset and we can reset our coverages and do some different things. When he's off, he now becomes that guy that can zip the backside, split flow, pull, insert, get split flow into the RPO game and be a flat player in the RPO game. So the Y off to me pre presents some different problems. And it, back to the original point, the overhangs and safeties that you have are going to dictate how you do some of these things. So if we're broken stack, if we're broken, broken stack, our overhang is the Sam linebacker. That's the extra defender. So where are we going to set him? Where is the passing strength? Is the passing strength the tight end? Is the passing strength the twins? Where are we going to set him? And then based how we set him, it's probably going to give us some limitations in coverage to the other side. It would be the same scenario if you were a if you were an over team and that was a three man surface and you decided that you want to set your three technique to the three man surface. All right. Well, now as an over team, if you set your nickel or your extra to the tight end, now you're going to play quarters to the tight end, and now you're going to play palms, all right, to the open side. And with an open B-gap there, now you can either two-gap or cancel the B-gap with the anchor, and the will can have the ball come out to him, all right? But how do you set that nickel? Now, technically... The nickel is not on the passing strength because the tight end is not the passing strength in that formation. The passing strength is actually over here. So where 4-2-5 teams struggle sometimes is if the Mike and the Will are box players and they're not taught how to play quarters concepts, they're only taught how to play, you know, in three vertical or the, the outside low part of palms where it's a two doesn't cross my face, three doesn't out leverage me. They're taught how to do those things, but if you don't cross train or hybrid train them to, to be outside the box playing quarters, like you may not want your mic or your will, if they are true box guys, you may not want one of them out here playing D gap, flat force, running with the wheel of two. And that's where you would need them if you wanted to stay with your true quarters theory, right? You would need them out there because if you play them in a the box, you can say you're playing some type of match quarters theory if you want, but if you play them in the box and two goes out, you're probably playing your free safety down on two, unless it's into the boundary and you think you can play some type of palms rule there and your corner can come off that, or you think you can play some type of hard cover two into the boundary where he's the half player and he's now the force player because the ball's into the boundary. But what happens is if your overhang goes, if you only have one true overhang, and he goes to the passing strength, you're going to get limited in coverage options to the tight end flanker side. All right, so where you play your safeties and your overhangs, how many do you have? What's your personnel group? How many safeties, how many overhangs do you have? Do you travel one of them to passing strength, or do you play one of them as a field play? So if you were to play this as a field defense, and you're going to leave your overhang to the field, so there's your nickel that's through the field. All right, and let's just say for argument's sake, you're keeping it like this and you've got a guy there and you've got a guy there. Well, with Y off stuff, you better be ready for him to trade and come over here. So now if he trades and he comes over there, what do you do with the nickel? Is the nickel a guy that can go back in the box and you pull a chain and your backers now become Nickel in the box is an A-gap player. Mike is there and your Willie is out here. Is that something that you're going to do? And maybe, all right, you are playing some type. If you're playing poach, then you're going to have to lock the corner on the backside there because you're now in trips, right? Can, if this was your will into the boundary, is he taught, your will's probably not going to play any other version of a mini mix 
stubby concept because your wheel's not running with two vertical. So the only other thing you can do is maybe play like the stump version over here and maybe the wheel could be a collision two flat guy. And now you're reading through what three's doing. You're gonna midpoint one and two. And then you've got a guy here that's gonna read three, three vertical. I'm leaning on three, three isn't vertical. I can zone the quarter. I can push out to my quarter. And now you can leave whoever you want on the backside because that's always gonna be key too is I want to leave two for one on the backside. I want D-gap run support and I wanna be able to bracket the single out there. So who are your overhangs? Where are you gonna set your overhangs? All right, how are you gonna choose in that two by two Y off world or even two by two Y attached? How are you gonna choose where your overhang goes to the passing strength? Because technically they're balanced. There really isn't a passing strength unless you consider the two speed, the passing strength over the tight end, which 99% of the country would. So if you're gonna travel him to the passing strength, he's going to two speed and now you don't have an apex nickel to the tight end side, so you're going to be a little bit limited in your coverage options. And then how you handle shift trades, motions, and things like that start to get limited because certain players on certain sides, if they only know how to play cut away side, you know, non-strength passing side, you end up being a check cover three team to formation into the boundary or something else because they get you to set the nickel where you want them. They shift you or trade you over to trips into the boundary. That guy on that side can only roll down and play D-gap, flat force. He can't play anything else. Now you're locked into three deep. They know every time they check you into the boundary, they get you into three deep. If you put the overhang into the boundary, now they know that they've got some coverage deals to the field that they can ex exploit, all right? Which, again, this whole idea of where you put the overhang, where the passing strength is, what you're trying to do in coverage. And my original argument stemmed from we are flight box, three high, that's technically a two by two deal. If that's a two by two, two by two deal, are we okay playing our normal front? Are we okay playing quarters there? Middle safety off three, palms to that side with a three one box. And now remember when it's a three one box, these A gaps are getting negated by those two. There is no other, all right, there is no other way to fit that when you have two overhangs outside the mic. The mic's gonna have to play a gap off the nose. You don't have another choice. So are we okay with that light box? Are we okay with fitting things that way? Are we okay that we might have to play the middle safety back through the backside on the quarterback? Those are all things that we have to look at because we only have one true overhang. So now we've got to bump some people and do some things. And now we're out of, all right, we're back into that, you know, three, one light box, tight front, how can we fit it? How can we handle it? Because if we had the ability to leave two backers in the box, well, now the one thing we know with two backers in the box is they can be A to C fitters. If the back's away, I'm going to think about playing the A unless I get a puller. If the back's to me, I'm going to think about falling back into C unless I get a puller. If we got pullers, pull to me, I'll go to the C. Pull away, I'll play the A. So now if we, if the back was here, again, in teaching, if the back was away, I'm telling him to think about being in the A, the back's to me, I'm thinking about being in the C. As soon as we start to get pullers, it's going to reverse. So now if we got some type of theory here where we got a puller, well, now with that puller, that overrides, and now we're just going to switch puller to me, I'll go to the C, puller away, I'll go to the A. So that's a... Neat little buzzword type way of teaching that when you're in a three, two box, you can play the A and the C with the two backers when you're in the tight front. Back away, I'll play the A. Back to me, I'll fall back C. Pullers override that. Puller to me, I'm going to the C. Puller away, I'm falling in that backside A or checking that backside A. So when we're in a three, two box, it's very easy for us to do that. That is why I have thought long and hard about possibly going to a three, four tight front structure where I play my normal split field rules. And now I have that added bonus of having overhang and safety, overhang and safety. So now I have less issues to worry about bumping and where I'm setting my overhang and where I'm setting my passing defender, the nickel, we still may switch guys as a passing strength guy, but I have an overhang to both sides. 
You give me two by two, I'm playing quarters, pounds, three, two box. I'm fitting A to C. I'm fitting A to C. And we are good to go. We're going to rock and roll. Difference with that is, yes, there are some things the offense can do, but now we're dead split field. We're dead middle of the field open. It's harder to disguise what we're doing. We don't have that third high safety that can give us that illusion of middle of the field open or closed, that guy that they don't account for. They're going to be able to account for this front. We know the runs we're going to get. They're going to be able to count and know who's in the fit and who they got to block. So we lose that kind of disruption disguise from the middle safety. All right. I hope that helps you guys uh, understand about overhangs and safeties. Make sure you subscribe, turn the notifications on. I appreciate everything you do. And remember, you won't play well until you play fast. And I will see you guys next time.